Okay, so in this video clip, I'm going to take a look at Halvarian's paper in the Journal of Economic Perspectives, and he sets out, um, the title of the paper is Big Data and New Tricks for Econometrics, and um, basically uh, in this paper, uh, a variety of different new big data techniques are described, and their applicability to a variety of different phenomena. Uh, is explained. Um, two of interest here are machine learning, artificial intelligence, and um, we can subcategorize subcate them down into classification and regression trees. So one interesting um, uh, application then is the C tree, which is a conditional inference tree, and that was used to sort, if you like, the <coughs> passengers uh, in the Titanic and predicts survivorship. And then uh, in section 4.2 of the paper, uh, he sets out the HMDA uh, example. So, um, and he applies a variety of different techniques. Uh, one, C trees, so conditional inference trees. Uh, also, he estimates in code provided with the paper um, a logistic uh, regression and then thirdly he also applies some analysis coming from random forests and they all provide similar type of uh, analysis um, some minor differences between the, the, the different tree techniques all, as well and we'll explore a little bit how they are different but in particular what we are interested in is the techniques uh, and the history here is is also probably of some relevance for people who looking at um, finance looking at mortgage origination uh, looking at the economic impacts of different types of uh, credit intermediation so uh, the original data set uh, it comes from Manel et al. 1996. So I'm going to explore in this video a little bit the the history of this paper. It's of the the Manel paper. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, but fundamentally, I'm of more interest is the data sets and how the techniques. But uh, it's hard to ignore a little bit the history here. So probably worth uh, just um, incorporating it in in terms of our thinking and uh, also why the paper is um, sort of uh, one that il precipitated a lot of uh, reviews, a lot of um, interest by academics, uh, both in the economic and social sciences, and uh, the, of course, the uh, issues relating to race and racial segregation and uh, groups being treated differently that's still something that's very prominent uh, even today so uh, this is a historical context but the starting point here would be this was a the, the data set was developed by Nanel part of the data a large part of the data came from HMDA uh, which related to uh, legislation passed in the 1970s to record the ethnic group and the, the gender uh, and some other um, data points for those people who were uh, making applications for uh, mortgages. So uh, there had been a history of redlining in the United States dating back to the 1920s. And um, the uh, in the 1970s that crystallized into um, Home Mortgage uh, Disclosure Act and uh, every commercial bank, uh, thrift, so on, had to record data in relation to decisions that they had made in terms of who got mortgages and who were unsuccessful in application in their application for mortgages. Um, the, uh, the history for Boston, roughly, if we took the 1990 data, something like um, of those who made applications for mortgages, if you were black, there was a 28% denial rate, whereas if you applied for mortgage and you were white, uh, the uh, denial rate was of the order of 10%. And 
and this discrepancy between the, the two levels of uh, denial um, has precipitated um, by the some Fed staff, there was four authors in this paper, and they wanted to address that, and commercial banks had explained that the discrepancies in terms of success in getting mortgages very often were related to other economic issues that were non-race in character and or non-racial in character um, and the uh, Federal Reserve of Boston or at least these four um, authors uh, managed to get some data that uh, supported the um, the, uh, the opposing point of view, or they made it quite clear that uh, race was somewhat significant. Now, uh, in, in the here in the techniques developed by Hal, um, uh, his perspective, the perspective that he develops, is uh, pretty much that uh, race wasn't as significant. It may have been hidden somewhere else in the data. But in terms of purely the, the output from the sea tree uh, and the random forest and from less extent logistic regression, uh, the evidence, evidence wasn't over, as overwhelming. So uh, from the sea tree analysis and from the random forest, uh, the output that was obtained didn't suggest that race was a hugely significant, significant factor. Uh, and we'll see why uh, later on. Okay, so um, in from papers from Hal's um, results here, he examined this question using tree-based estimators described in the previous section. So the C trees, um, conditional inference tree. The data consists of two thousand three hundred eighty observations of twelve predictors. Some of these predictors were original and from the original HMDA dataset, and the uh, Manel A. Al then supplemented that uh, at a fair amount of expense. It, when I checked back through some of the papers, it did disclose that there was a cost actually in collating all the data, but additional data was added in to try and control for things like uh, loan to value ratios and um, housing expense to income ratios and uh, debt to income ratios. So there's a variety of different other factors uh, that were going to be included in. Um, the Manel paper that weren't um, merely data that could be just uh, garnered from HMDA. Okay, so a synopsis then of that of that Manel paper. The Manel paper is uh, from the American Economic uh, Review and um, Mortgage Lending in Boston interpreting HMDA data. So uh, Manel, Tootle, Brown, McEnany were the uh, four authors and um, uh, Lad um, provides an overview of that paper. We might have a look at that. So Helen Ladd, again, uh, Journal of Economic Perspectives, but a 1998 uh, paper. And again, here she was, uh, the history here is, look, there's discrimination in this particular market. Uh, based on race and uh, what evidence is there to support that. So she goes through uh, quite a number of different studies that address this particular issue. But one in particular then is the one with Manel A. Al, uh, 1996. So let's just find that. On page 49, um, we, if we come down a little bit, I think to the last paragraph, uh, Lad Helen uh, does a review uh, of the Manel paper. So the 1989 expansion of data reporting requirement for lending institutions under the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act of 1975 provided new data on individual applications for additional research. Beginning in 1990, nine variables are now included for each application, date of the application, loan amount, census tract of property, if the property is owner-occupied, purpose of loan, purchase, improvement or refinancing, loan guarantee, conventional FHA, FHA or VA. So if the loan is in America, uh, loans are, mortgages are very often sold in the second year um, after they've been uh, originated 
and then they pass through maybe Fannie Mae, which is a more conventional type form, Freddie Mac, and then altern alternatives would be the Veterans Association or I think the Federal Housing Association. So these are a little bit relaxed in terms of the standards that are applied and then this is for people with some kind of military, typically uh, veterans who come home and normally there are um, fringe benefits to having been involved in in military in the US uh, also relating to uh, uh, mortgages right um so loan this loan disposition approved approved but withdrawn no lender action taken or denied race gender and applicant income moreover the set of reporting lenders was expanded beyond depository institutions to include independent mortgage companies the 1994 data, for example, included information on more than 12 million loan applications from over 3,000 lenders. Uh, however, the new HMDA data still fell short of what was required for a conclusive study of racial, racial discrimination. Several key variables such as the characteristic of the property and the credit history of the applicant were not included. Okay, so um, these limitations were di directly addressed by the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston in, it would have been then recent study, it was a 1996 paper, If it, the Manel paper was 1996, in its recent study of discrimination and mortgage lending. To supplement the HMDA data, researchers at the Boston Fed sought the cooperation of lenders throughout the Boston metropolitan area. Their procedure was to examine all of the 1990 uh, loan applications from minorities in the Boston area plus a random sample of applications from whites. For each application, the researchers asked lenders to provide an additional set of 38 pieces of information, which according to prior discussion with the lenders included all the information in the lender's information set at the time the loan was made. Some files some files were dropped from the analysis because of missing data and others because the borrowers withdrew the application before a decision was made. Uh, the final sample included 3,000 applications, 700 of which were uh, from blacks and Hispanics. Which, With this rich data set, researchers were armed to test for discrimination and mortgage lending the study was originally circulated in 1992, so there was earlier drafts of the 1996 paper, uh, but there had been quite a bit of criticism, early criticism, uh, and they tried to address those criticisms, and then finally the paper was published in March 1996 in the American Economic Review, that's the Manel A. Al 1996 uh, paper. So, uh, the history here is pretty much the uh, there was very strong evidence of uh, discrimination in terms of or at least on the surface at first when you looked at the numbers in terms of uh, percentage of successful applicants from different ethnic groups uh, African Americans who applied for mortgages uh, 28% were denied in 1990, uh, as opposed to only 10% of whites uh, looking for, again, seeking mortgage, making mortgage application. Um, when commercial banks reviewed that, looked at that, they said, well, a lot of that this discrepancy could be explained away by other risk factors uh, related to the individual who were making the applications and that race wasn't really an issue. Uh, the Federal Reserve of Boston set out to examine that and they took on board, they tried to control for those other factors, uh, that, but that meant they had to gather data in addition to the HMDA data. The HD, HMDA data didn't capture things like uh, personal uh, credit risks, the credit scores, the mortgage credit scores, the uh, debt income ratios, the loan to value ratios, and they set about including those data, that data set in at quite considerable expect, expense to them and, and it entailed a lot of personnel. So that's the history. That's what we're going to review. 
we're going to look at the techniques developed by Varian, but this is the back 